Hi, and welcome to another Lorenzo's Music Podcast. On today's show, I talk with the singer for a metal band, a performative metal band, a metal band that is a self-described most metal band in the world. They are the Lords of the Trident, and we talk because they have a new album coming out, and also because I have just always been fascinated with this band. They're actually a band that is in the same town that I'm in, Madison, Wisconsin, and they perform very elaborate shows, shows that have flames and fire, and also do their own festivals. They have a Mad with Mauer, Mad with Mauer, Mad with Power Fest is what it's called, and they do them every year. And it is a two-day event of just metal bands getting together and playing. They put on this event themselves. We talk about how that started. We talk about how the band started and also how they started Patreon years ago. And it has become the money maker for the band to allow them to create the videos and tours and things that they do. So we talk about how they actually started using Patreon and how it's benefited the band and really how it built over time. So there's some great insight on how to use Patreon as a musician in this conversation. So it was a, it was just really fun talking to the person. I always have a great time when we sit down and talk. So here's that interview starting right now. What's up, Minions and Mortals? This is Fang von Rathenstein, a.k.a. Ty Christian, lead singer of the most metal band on earth, the Lords of the Trident, and uh, CEO of Pillaging at Mad with Power Fest. And I am here today uh, ready to talk, ready to spill the beans. <laughs> now, is that actually the name of the... You have a company that you... What did you say it was? The Pillaging? Well, I'm the CEO of, CEO of Pillaging. You know, like, yeah, absolutely. No, uh, our... our <laughs> or is that just... That, that was just, just a phrase. Title. Gotcha. That's just honorific, you know. Uh, you know, you could you could say... You could say uh, CEO of Barbarian Rage, Rage. You could say CFO of Pillaging. You could say, you know, whatever you want. I mean, well, like... I just didn't know uh, because I know that your record C label... COO of Fire. You know, we could do all of that. Yeah. Well, and your record... The record label that you release under, at least underneath what it says on YouTube on the topics page is like Johnny something or other? What's what's that? Junko, Junko Johnson Records. Junko Johnson Records. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah, I didn't yeah. know if that was just another thing that you were saying. So a Junko Johnson Records is a real company. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, when I was when I was in uh, when I was in college, I was in Japanese class. Uh, one of one of my three majors in college. I was a little bit of an overachiever, I suppose. But um, in in class, we were doing this. Uh, this one lesson on how uh, recently Japanese women who have gotten married have decided to keep their maiden maiden name. It was, you know, it's a pretty normal thing in America, yeah. but in Japan, it's kind of weird. Okay. And so um, one of the TAs said to us, did you know, uh, you know, if you think about it, one of the senseis did that. Can you think of who that was? And we were like, oh, uh, Mori sensei is married, but she has a Japanese last name. And so we asked what, what is her husband's last name? Mm -hmm. and, Cause she, she married, a, she married an American. And, uh, and, and he said, Oh, she said, Oh, Johnson. So, Oh, her name would have been Junko Johnson. <laughs> and, and, and we had this, I, I immediately had this idea of like, you know, coming up on the court, number 35, Junko Johnson, you know, like a basketball player. Um, so when I, when I would, uh, record music um and release that i would do some like recordings every year for for japanese we did a, a uh we would record like our own like covers of songs and things like that for a class project i always released it under junko johnson records okay and so when lords of the trident started up i just said you know what i've already released so much music under junko johnson records let's just keep the ball rolling Right. And I and I actually, you know, incorporated it. It, it is a publishing company and everything. So, yeah. Nice. OK. See, now I would not have gathered that's where the story was going to come from. <laughs> when I read it, it instantly to me sounded like some it would have been like some one off Mary Melody's character from like the oh. 1920s, like just some <laughs> down on his luck, like, I don't know anthropomorphic bird of some sort. So that was that was where my mind went when I first read it. Sure, sure. Okay. Now, you also said, and of course, your tag is 
the most metal band band in in the world or on earth on earth on, on earth, earth. Yeah. okay i mean right. you know it's six to one half a dozen of the other you, yeah i mean and you don't know what's <laughs> happening in the other galaxies of course but if you did have to describe your music because i do tell people about your band all the time uh because i'm just i'm just so <laughs> obsessed with what you do um how do you actually describe what it is that you do I would say, you know, uh, Dio, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest all sat around a coffee table and decided to have a Dungeons and Dragons game, and they were oh, also nice. really into opera uh, and fire. So okay. that's, about, that's how I'd put it. All right. <laughs> now, what was the motivation behind starting the band? I know you've been doing it for quite some time, but I never really thought of the fact, like, what it is, and it seems like it's always been this way. What was the motivation of how the band presents themselves and what you do uh i bought a man of war dvd when i was in high school because i thought it was hilarious yeah um i i i saw the cover i saw i and one of my friends had shown me a a you know a a 480 pixel super grainy man of war early um music video and i was like this is hilarious yeah and then i found out that people take it like deadly seriously mm -hmm. You know, and so I, I, I bought that that DVD It was Man of War's Hell on Earth three uh, and I watched it uh, in college with my buddies and we would laugh and and we would scream uh, kill with power down the dorm room walls and they would reply, die, die. <laughs> so um, I, so it was partially that uh, one, one of the things that um, uh, so I've been in bands since I was um, like 15, early, early 15, late okay. 14, early 15. And and um, I played a lot. Of, I played a lot of shows before I started up Lords of the Trident. And the one thing that I consistently and, and by the way, it was like alternative rock and funk and kind of like Pearl Jam, Red Hot Chili Peppers kind of stuff. OK, so I I played a lot of shows before I started anything with Lords of the Trident. Um, and the one thing that I, I I remember very vividly about that period in my life is that I couldn't remember any of the bands that I had played with every really? single band, every single band that I played with was like jeans and t-shirt, you know, one guy maybe had an acoustic guitar oh, or like okay. a Stratocaster. I, I couldn't, I, I could not tell them apart from each other. If you, if you put them in a, a, a lineup, I would be like, I have no idea who goes in what band, um, you know, and, and, and that stuck with me. I was like, you know, and, and we, we dressed like that too. We were the mm -hmm. exact same We had jeans and t-shirt, you know, um, and, and there was nothing about us that differentiated ourselves from another band visually. Right. Uh, and, and it was a little bit before that, um, you know, uh, the darkness came on the scene and mm. I was just like, I was in love immediately with the darkness. I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is amazing. This is incredible. Um, there was a, you know, a lot of people remember there was a long period from like the, the, you know, maybe mid nineties to the mid you know 2000s where music was really serious and it was about feelings and you couldn't you couldn't <laughs> yes. laugh and you had to like you know you were you had bands like stained and creed and you know talking about how their dads never loved them and never supported their artwork right. and you know and that's what that's what a lot of the music scene was and then when the darkness came on the scene it was like oh my god finally we can be we can have fun again mm -hmm. holy shit i i, I <laughs> you know I was always trying to have fun with my music and everybody's like, no, it must be serious. It's got to be about emotions. Right. And, uh, you know, so, um, well, to be fair, there was hair metal during that time and that was just about partying and girls. So there was yeah. that. Well, there, there was, <laughs> but you but, mean you know, in the it, scene it was, we were in. Yeah. In the scene I was in and it, it, it is, it is sort of petered out by that point. I mean, yeah. people, it, it like people had had too much fun and now they want to be super serious for a long time. Right. Uh, and they were, um, and then you had so, the required ballad that had to be on every album. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it was, it was definitely one of those things where it, like, it was a, it was a confluence of all those, all those different, um, aspects of like, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to put together like a show, like a real yeah. show. Um, I want to be able to differentiate ourselves. And also, you know, at the time that we started up Lords of the Trident, other than that Manowar DVD, I was not into metal. I didn't know anything about metal. Oh, really? Um, no, I was, I was very, I, I won't say I was anti-metal, but I just was, I, I like. You never went to, through your metal phase before that? No, no. Okay. I, I became a metalhead, be, like, through osmosis, because wow. I, 
I roomed, I was roommates with, uh, with Aki, uh, who is the guitarist in, in the band, uh, and my best friend. And he and I would, he would play, he'd be like, oh, you know, you, would you mind if I play music while I study? I'm like, yeah, Ev, go for it. You know, and, and our computers were like back to back. And so he'd be playing like Maiden and Priest and Dio. And I'd like, be like, hey, what, what, what song is that? Oh, it's Iron Maiden. Ha! Huh. Really? Huh, that's Iron Maiden. Oh, that's, I like this. I kind of like this. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, and he'd play the next one. Like, who's that? Oh, it's Dio. Oh, I really like his. Wow. Okay. I didn't, you know, I, I was, I was under the impression, and I think a lot of people, a lot of people who are outside of the metal genre are under the impression that when you say metal or heavy metal, it's a bunch of like dudes with pointy guitars going like, <laughs> you know, and writing songs about murder and stuff like that. And, yeah. you know, certainly there is that, but I think, you know, at least as it stands right now, metal in terms of the, sh the amount of subgenres is so broad that you could be metal and be radio rock. And you could also be metal and be like the, the most screeching noise you've ever heard in your entire life that no one would ever want to listen to. Mm -hmm. And that's still, it's all still metal. And, and so when, you know, when we formed the band, I had come at the branding aspect of the band from an, as from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. Um, Madison, Wisconsin at that time was not a very metal friendly, uh, uh, scene. It, you know, there was a few metal bands, but nothing, nothing. It was mostly jam bands. It was mostly jam. It was mostly like funk. It was, you know, it was, it was, uh, just the startings of indie rock kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there wasn't a lot of, um, I guess, let's say tolerance for, or interest in, uh, a metal band in Madison, Wisconsin. So, um, so I thought to myself, you know, we're going to we're going to get these we're going to get these these costumes, we're going to get armor, we're going to get fire and swords and confetti and, you know, and, and signs and, you know, and, and, and we're going to put that all over our posters so that even if somebody is maybe taken aback by like heavy metal, they'll at least look at the poster and they'll be like, what the hell is going on here? Mm -hmm. Like, I have to come see this show just to see what the hell this is about. Um, and it, it worked. It worked really well. There were people that were that would come in just to see the show uh, who were not metalheads and they would leave going like, wait a minute, that that's that's metal. That's right. I thought that was like rock. Are you telling me that's metal? Oh, I kind of like metal, I think. I don't know. So you they know? came at it with the same interest that you had in Manowar, except you were not just wearing fur. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and we and none of us were as ripped as, as Manowar was on that particular <laughs> album cover. You know, there's there's a lot of cheese and beer in Wisconsin, and and you know, I have drank and, and eaten all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I had a similar obsession, but didn't take it the direction you did. Uh, I was in a punk band at the time, and we became obsessed with Celtic Frost or Celtic Frost, mm, whichever way mm. you want to say it. But mm -hmm. just that. And then during that time that we discovered them was also the one year that they decided to go glam. And they put out the <laughs> glam album that they had, and everybody was like, what the hell is this? And they're basically like, we need to make money. Anyway, that, but it was, we had a similar thing, but we never pursued it. We just loved it in secret, but we were mm -hmm. doing punk rock and we had a singer with the Mohawk and all that stuff. So I guess we did that. Our singer did have the cactus Mohawk, but that's, <laughs> that's interesting. I did not know the origin of that story or the fact that you were just discovering metal as you were doing it. Okay. Yep. yep. So now, a lot of it was just like in the moment I had, I had just listened to, this album or that album, that album. And then we, you know, Oh, let's record, let's record an album like that. Yeah. And so I was, I was just kind of like figuring it out as I went, as I went along, you know? Well, and how was the transition from going into that, like writing songs that way? And oh, it's, it's, it's quite the jump from being in an indie band to flat out <laughs> going, here's a song about dragons, you know, <laughs> uh, it was, it was, uh, it was incredibly liberating um, because, you know, we would just, I would be able to write the, the stupidest, the stupidest stuff. Yeah. Um, and the most fantastical stuff that I wanted and mm -hmm. any, everything was on the table. Nothing was too ridiculous or out there or silly. Um, it it's you know, that is one of the things that, um, that a lot of people ask about, you know, when we're talking about, um, merch and branding and things like that, you know, it, it, like if you look at Lords of the Trident, um, we're our, our music and the way that we approach it is very serious. We, mm -hmm. we write, you know, songs that are, that are, I think, uh, good. 
and we record them well and we pay a lot of attention to lyrics and stuff like that yeah um so that the songs by themselves could stand on their own um but the the visuals are very fantastical and very all over the place and extremely tongue-in-cheek a lot of the stuff is extremely tongue-in-cheek the the thing that allows us to do is we can make a uh we can make a heavy t-shirt that's like super, like super metal looking and super serious, you know, and put Lords of the Trident on the top of it. And people would be like, hell yeah, that's Lords of the Trident. Right. And we can make a, a pink t-shirt with a teddy bear riding a unicorn uh, with a trident with cartoon blood all over it and put Lords of the Trident on the top of it. And they'd be like, hell yeah, that's Lords of the Trident. Yeah. Um, so we have, you know, we have so much leeway in what we do, how we do it. Um, which is a very freeing aspect of essentially just being like, yeah, we're going to write about whatever the hell we want. We don't, we don't, we don't care. It can be really serious. It can be really not serious. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. Um, I definitely didn't have that in my previous bands. Um, you know, and another example, well, it would be like, hard uh, to approach people going, here's this song that I have written about this and they're going to be, I mean, they, a lot of the times people don't even ask what is that song about when you're in a band they're just like that yeah. sounds cool but yeah i feel like in that scenario they would have been like what are you saying dude <laughs> right 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 it would have been a little bit of a weird you know juxtaposition to uh for like my jeans and t-shirt you know indie rock band to be like feelings feelings and then all of a sudden like dragons dragon yeah. you know it's like yeah so right now when you recorded the first album did you go into a studio or were you always <laughs> self-recording? No, no, I did not go into a studio because when we were, when we were doing this, it was just a recording project we were doing for fun. We, we didn't, we didn't actually think that we were going to start a, a band that was going to last any longer than a couple of months. Okay. Um, we, so like, you know, the, my, my super senior year, like I said, I had three majors, so I did a little bit of extra work at the end there. My super senior year, um, the band I was in in college was breaking up because, you know, this guy was going to grad school here. This guy was mm -hmm. going to law school here. And, uh, and they were, and at, during the summer, I didn't have anything to do it, music wise. Um, and, uh, so I, I, I talked to Aki and, uh, the guitarist at the time, whose name was Brian, our current guitarist name is also Brian, but I will refer to him as Brian too. So Brian mm -hmm. won. I talked to both of them and I'm like, you guys want to like try to play like a show or two just for fun, you know, because we we finished this CD. We recorded the CD first, like we recorded demos in our dorm rooms. And then I was living really? in an efficiency. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then I was living in an efficiency and we were just recording everything in the one room that I was in, essentially. On tape, um, on uh, computer? What were, always, we... always digital. OK. Always digital. Um, and, and yeah, so then I, I think, you know, uh, and the, well, in the first, the first album, uh, all the drums were just programmed. So they, we didn't even have like a, a real drummer. On the, oh, okay. On the, I, that was going to be my album. next question was in an efficiency and in a studio, how are you doing drums? Okay. Yeah, we did. We didn't is the, is the, is the answer. Okay. Um, so we had this, we had this album done and, you know, and I, I mixed it, uh, terribly, uh, and, um, cause I didn't know what it, it was. This was, this was the first time I had ever done any recording any mixing any anything in Damn. terms of like production um and 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 this was just a fun little side project that we didn't think was gonna we were gonna do anything with so i i you know i, I went to kinko's and i printed out you know enough material for like i don't know 50 cds or something like that yeah and we ended up playing you know two shows and then we had a, a, a cd release party for this cd that we had finished um and oddly enough somehow the the planets aligned at the CD release party, um, I still don't know. How, I still have no explanation as to why this happened or how this happened. All right. But we ended up uh, selling out the frequency. Oh, okay. Um, and like we, this is our third show, you know. And when I say selling out, I mean like we had like 140 people in the frequency wow. for our third show and people were like singing along people somehow knew some of the lyrics uh there was stage diving uh i had never ever experienced anything like this in any of my previous bands we you know like we were lucky if we played to 20 people uh yeah. in my previous band um and 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 so after that CD release party was over, we were down in the basement of the frequency, looking at each other, just mouth agape, and going like, "Ah, uh, do we, do do we do we do we keep going? Because I mean, that was pretty great. Mm -hmm. We should probably keep going." 
and uh, and we decided to keep going. And you know, 15, 16 years later, here we are. Yeah, so. I was gonna say it was. It was. I mean, when I first heard about you, I want to say it was maybe 2016, which doesn't seem that long ago, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That was so. I w- I was curious how long you've been doing it. You've been doing it that long, and now you've even. I mean, how often do you release albums? How often would you say that you put out an album? The I think the average for us has been an average of an album every like 1.75 years, something like that. <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty specific number. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you look at it, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, but it, it's it's either been I, I would you know if you want to round it up, I'd say every two years or so we we drop something. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you continue to do things in between that and. All that. I mean, lots of other. We'll talk about more of that in a minute. But sticking <laughs> with the album, uh, you have a new one that's coming out slash technically already out ish. Technically out, yeah. Yes. So tell me about first the new album and um, one the album itself. I have I have other mm-hmm. questions about the album, but tell me about the new album that's coming out. Yeah, the new album is called the VGEP. Stands for the uh, short for the video game EP. We had a bunch of songs that um, were left over from uh, the the last album that we'd written, the Offering, uh, and they were too good to let go. And uh, and so we decided to kind of, but they didn't exactly feel, fit the vibe um, of the last album. The last album was was kind of depressing. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, so they didn't fit that depressing vibe. And so we decided to, you know, make our own little EP and we, and we wrote them. We didn't have, uh, any sort of lyrics planned at the time. Cause we knew from the get go that they just weren't going to fit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we wrote the lyrics about, um, a bunch of our favorite, uh, video games. Um, okay. And, and so, uh, so yeah, so it's a five song EP. Uh, and it is, uh, technically it released, uh, three days ago on June 1st. And, um, but it released only to our Patreon backers. Mm -hmm. Um, so people at the $5 level or above on our Patreon, uh, got access to it, got a CD sent to them in the mail, um, and have access to the MP3s right now. Uh, and anybody who joins our Patreon, uh, going forward can immediately get access to this album and the last four albums we released for five bucks. Um, so it's a pretty good deal. Uh, and, and yeah, we're going to keep it under lock and key until October 1st. So yeah. we are, are we're oh, I thought re- it was November. Okay. October, October, we're going to be releasing one song a month. Uh, and, and on October 1st is technically when we release the fifth and final song. So we figured let's just, you know, I mean, it, everything will be out at that point. Okay. So we'll, we'll, uh, allow people to, to buy it. But and, until then, uh, you can't, you can't buy the CD. You can't buy the physical copy. Um, the only way actually to get a physical copy of this CD is to either have been on the Patreon before it dropped, you know, to get in your time machine and do that, or um, to come see us live in person. We'll have physical copies. Oh, so available. it's not even available if people were to join after the fact. Interesting. Okay. Nope, you can't you can't buy it. You can't stream it. You can't do anything. The only thing you can do is you get access to the MP3s and the waves if you join uh, on the Patreon, but you cannot, you cannot buy a physical copy of the album until October. Okay. Now you cleared up one thing that I was going to ask, which is why it was called the video game EP. (laughs) But, uh, now I want to ask about the artwork, the artwork, you have eight bit, uh, or 16 bit, I guess it could be either way. The uh, artwork, yeah. yeah, (laughs) And, uh, it could be, uh, or for, for it, that's in digital. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like video game art. It's got Lords of the Trident uh, spray painted on a wall and all that. Where did you get that done? Did you do it yourself? How did that artwork no. come about? No, the one the the one thing I know for a fact that I am absolutely horrendous at is drawing or or <laughs> making art of any kind. I'm okay. really bad at that. I can Photoshop. Uh, I'm really good at Photoshop. I'm really terrible at like creating something from nothing. You know, I can't do that. Um, so, uh, I, um, we knew we wanted to do like a pixel art kind of a thing, kind of to fit the the vibe of the, of the EP. Um, so we, we actually reached out to Jake from the band Aether Realm because he is the sound designer, uh, for the, the, the video game Sea of Stars, which came out, you know, I think maybe about nine months ago at this point. Hmm. Um, and it was indie game of the year. It blew my mind. It was so good. And I was like, I can't believe I know someone 
who worked on this game. This is amazing. Um, but the game is all like 16 bit pixel art, you know, kind of in the Super Nintendo style. Hmm. And so I was like, can you give me suggestions? And he's, he sent me a bunch of artists. Uh, we went, went with this guy, uh, Trey, who is a really, really talented guy. He's from Scotland. Uh, and yeah, we sent him our ideas and he just like banged it out and pretty much perfect the first time. Nice. Wow. Okay, cool. I'm curious what kind of uh, thing he used to create the pixel art. Cause it was, I mean, it's just, it, it, it was definitely whatever they used to make it out of. Cause it was yeah. just, it, it was just so authentic, but yet there, your name was in it. It wasn't like somebody slapped a, like you said, a Photoshop thing on top of it. Right. It wasn't like you did that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Now going to the Patreon thing. Now this is something I've always been fascinated with and also confused slash scared by <laughs> okay. is Patreon. And you've been doing it for quite some time and yeah, very think... successful at it. So tell me, first of all, about your Patreon, like what, what it is that you do on the Patreon. Tell me about the concept of it to date. Yeah, so if anybody's not familiar with what a Patreon is, essentially it's kind of like a patron of the arts model. You know, back in the medieval times, you'd have uh, one really, really rich person giving you all of the money that you needed to live, mm -hmm. and he'd just be like, make artwork and make it of me riding a horse into battle, you know. Um, and, that, and that guy was a patron of the arts, right? So Patreon is the same model, but instead of one person giving you all the money you need to live, uh, it's essentially more like a fan club model where you have a bunch of people giving you a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars or fifteen dollars or whatever a month. Um, and in exchange, they get certain perks, certain things um, out of the Patreon for some people. Uh, and, you know, when when I started it up, I actually started it. I was I, I didn't I, I wasn't in. I, I've never been uh, super optimistic about crowdfunding from the get-go we, we did okay we did our uh I, the the thing the thing that has turned me into a believer is i have been proven wrong every single time hmm. uh the first kickstarter that we did we we did a kickstarter right maybe about a year after kickstarter first started and um we we did a kickstarter and i went to all these seminars and i read all these you know articles and talked to many people about kickstarter and made it made sure i was like prepped and ready to go before i did this kickstarter mm -hmm. and this is going to sound hilarious now um but we asked for the whopping sum of 700 dollars nice on our kickstarter and i told the guys i'm like look it, it, it might be down to the wire. We're going to be doing this for 30 days. It, it might be down to the wire. We might have to put in some of our own money mm -hmm. to like get it over the finish line. But, uh, you know, I think it'll be worth it. You know, we, we'll try this out. We'll see how it how it happens. And I, I had uh, one of the things that they recommended that I did was um, make make a joke, a joke level. So, like, do something that's so ridiculous that you'll never, oh, ever okay. reach, you know, like fifty thousand dollars. I'll take a. You know, a, a fully, fully nude selfie and send it to my mom or something, you know, like right. some, some, some crazy. Right. So I made a, uh, a, a I never, I, I didn't think we would ever get to $700 ever. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a level that was triple that $2,400 um, or uh, I think it was 800. Yeah, it was, it was 800. So it was triple that $2,400. And for $2,400, I would, um, do a Lords of the Trident sexy calendar. I can't and, remember this. <laughs> um, and I told the guys, we're never going to get there. $2,400? Yeah. How the hell are we ever... We're never going to make $2,400. This is insane. No no one's, you know. So um, we launched the Kickstarter, and the we hit the goal the first day, immediately. Um, like, under 20, under 20 hours, we hit the goal. Nice. And I was like, this is awesome! Oh shit! It's yeah. still going. Oh no! So we ended up making a sexy calendar. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, it was the men of Lords of the Trident 2014 calendar, um, <laughs> and uh, the guys made me promise never ever to do that ever again. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. Like every time I've how done... many? Wait, how many people got it? How many people oh, got geez. the calendar? I mean, it was at least 30. It was at okay. least 30. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember exactly, but it was it was a number of them. Um, and yeah, so like every time I've done 
uh, any sort of crowdfunding, I've always been proven wrong. I've always thought it's not going to work, and I've always been proven wrong. And it was the same thing with Patreon. I was a little hesitant to start a Patreon uh, until I saw um, one of my favorite uh, online comedy groups, uh, Mega64. In fact, the, the whole wall over here is all Mega64 posters. Okay. Um, I am the, the biggest fan of Mega64. And they started up a Patreon, and their pitch was... Yo, um, if you want to donate, you can. Here it is. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to give you anything extra. Um, but, you know, uh, th this will help us, like, make stuff faster. Um, we're not going to lock anything behind, you know, a gate here. We're just – this is just, like, if you want to pitch in, you can. Okay. Uh, and that's it. And, and that was their, their whole pitch. And within uh, 24 hours, they were making an extra ten grand a month. Oh, nice. Um. Which Damn. I looked at and I was like, oh. yeah, exactly. You know, um, of course I joined I joined their Patreon, but I was still shocked by like I can't believe this. But you uh, also then participated in exactly what they're talking about, where they're like, you're not going to get nothing, and you're like, yeah. that's amazing they did that. I'll join. You know. <laughs> well, I've gotten I've gotten so much like entertainment out of the stuff that they just release normally. Yeah. That I was like, dude, this is worth more than ten bucks a month. I give them twenty. Like, you know, I think right now I'm I'm giving them twenty four dollars a month. I think oh, wow. on their Patreon still actively. Okay. Oh God, yeah, yeah, okay. no, and and so they have they have actually updated <laughs> once they hit like about a month after they hit you know ten or fifteen grand, they were like, so, um we'll do some exclusive stuff, I guess, because this was bigger than we thought it was going to turn right. out to be. So, okay. Well, that's you know, cool. and now, All right. Yeah. So, so that inspired me to make a Patreon and, um, and, 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 and that's essentially what ended up happening. It was a lot slower than 24 hours, but you know, we, we started out getting an extra $300 a month and then it was an extra 400 and then it was extra, you know, mm -hmm. 700. Um, and, it you know and it, it just it actually exponentially grew and what that ended up turning into was kind of the economic driver behind the band because it, it changed the way that we could think about um setting goals and things like that so you know um when we go out and play uh live shows some shows you know we'll make a lot of money on the merch some shows we won't make very much at all okay. some shows we'll have to drive a, a ton and you know we'll and the car will break down and we'll have a 700 hundred dollar repair some shows we'll have a whole tour and the car will be just fine um you know it, it was very variable there was nothing consistent that we could look at and say okay in january we're gonna we're forecasted to make four hundred dollars in february we're forecasted to make seven hundred dollars because you know we, we had no idea Mm -hmm. You know, we could make four hundred dollars in a night, or we could make four hundred dollars over the course of five months. It's it's extremely variable. But now that we had Patreon, I know for a fact I can look at that Patreon and I can say, okay, every month we are pulling in at least three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? And then two months down the road, I'd be like, okay, we had more people join. Every month we're pulling in four hundred dollars. And then when that happens, that changes your perspective on how you look at um, things that you could do for the band. So like, for instance, uh, we were talking about in-ear monitors earlier, you know, mm -hmm. in-ear monitors are extremely expensive. Setting up the entire system is extremely expensive. And if you don't have a consistent monthly income from your music projects coming in, uh, it's hard for you to budget for that. Or you have to like, right. you know, everybody has to pitch in and then you'll be like, well, I guess we'll pay ourselves back sometime, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. but, but, with patreon i can say okay we got 300 bucks coming in a month if we save up for six months we'll have this much we can we can put it towards this we can do this kind of thing you know or everybody can buy this now and i'll give everybody a hundred dollars a month and they'll be paid back oh, okay year and you know so it so it, it changes how it, you know how you can look at things another great example if we didn't have patreon i absolutely guarantee you the band would have broken up in uh in 2019 uh because mm. we did a uh we did a european tour right actually had nothing to do with covid um we did oh, a yeah i was assuming it yeah. was okay so yeah. it had to do i know that you did go to to europe right yeah it had nothing to do with covid we we went to your we went to europe um around uh, i think it was around september uh september or october um and the booking agent that we uh worked with although he was very nice uh he ended up being uh blind mm -hmm. which 
he, no one told me until we got to Brussels, and okay. then he showed up with a blind cane. So you know, only in the music industry. Um, and he was a, he was a he was a wonderful guy, a terrible booking agent, and he also forgot to book all of our accommodations every single night. And we were planning on staying at like twenty dollar a night hostels, where yeah. we crammed in with twenty you know twenty other people. In I room. vaguely remember you sharing little bits about this. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, instead, it turns out when you have a bus and eight people uh, and you don't make reservations ahead of time, the only places that are open for you are like $500 a night luxury hotels. So we came back um, from that tour uh, with uh, uh, about 10 grand in debt. Yeah. And and so the thing was, is like if we did not have that consistent monthly income, we uh, we would essentially be at each other's throats being like, my credit card bill's coming due. I need everybody to pitch in. Ah, oh, I gave you money last month. Oh, you know, and we would have broken up because we would have been fighting over paying back this 10 grand. Yeah. That, you know, but we, you know, at the time, I think we were making like, um, uh, like maybe $2,300 a month. So we were like, okay, this sucks, but you know, we have this much in the band fund that we can use to pay it, pay it down. Um, and then, you know, in, in the next four months, we'll be debt free. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so and, and so that is essentially what Patreon has allowed us to do is to is to plan ahead, plan for the future and to have like essentially a uh, the ability to put money consistently into a bank and then, you know, save it up and do something big and stupid with it. Yeah. Like tour Japan or put on America's largest, big, biggest power metal festival, you know, like that. Those sort of things are because of. The, the Patreon money that's coming in now. Uh, but also one thing I'd like to know about with doing that sort of thing, mm-hmm. uh, you can't just go, I started a Patreon. Now we'll just wait for the money to come in. How were you actively going out and promoting it and finding people uh, uh, that would be interested in what you do? So when we, when we first started up the Patreon and, you know, and we, and we hit up our super fans about it uh, and we were almost, you know, overnight making, I think two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars a month. Right. Damn, that's still good. And so, and so we we started to look at that, and we said, you know, as the number kind of linearly grew, yeah. we were like, this is our number one money maker right now, um, and probably will be in the future if it continues this growth. This will very quickly be the economic driver, the economic engine of the band. So what we did is we essentially made sure uh, on everything that we did that Patreon was mentioned and, Hmm. and in everything we did that we thought about how this is going to affect Patreon uh, because, because essentially the more time and effort we put into raising awareness of the Patreon uh, that would pay us back literally in, in regular money. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so we would do things like, and I mean, we still do this to this day. Every single video we ever, ever come out with, whether it's a personal thing or it's a, a music video or whatever, there's a one second bumper at the beginning of the of the video that says, you know, this video brought to you by Patreon. There's a five second bumper at the end of the video that says this video is brought to you by Patreon. Okay. The, the, the first thing you read in the description is join the Patreon. The first comment you see is join the Patreon. So we, we raise awareness by doing that. We also raise a lot of awareness by using exclusivity on the Patreon. So we come out with um, two T-shirt designs a year, uh, one of which right. is exclusive yeah. to the Patreon. So the only way that you can get that T-shirt is if you are on the Patreon at that time. Um, you know, And at the end of the year, we come out with a pin, uh, like a special end of the year pin. We have like a Lords of the Trident pin club, basically. Um, and that is like the, pa- the, the top tier patreon backers for that year get that pin Mm -hmm. um and so you know people get to have a vest full of pins that you know somebody somebody else on the patreon could be like oh my god you've been around since 2019 holy cow you know that kind of a thing um so it's it's a it's a you know mark of pride essentially for a lot of people but you know the doing doing exclusive things and locking it down behind the patreon and then being very loud about it Mm -hmm. was was a way that we and, and we still do this so you know the exclusive shirt you know, hey, we're we're coming out with a shirt. Uh, there's only one way to get it. You got to jump on the Patreon, and and we'll say we'll say to people like, look, if you just want to join for a month to get the shirt and leave, totally fine. Yeah, totally fine. Don't worry about it. You know, essentially think of it as just buying a shirt, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, and then we tell our lower tiers, you know, we get we, the shirts go out to eight dollars and above. So we tell our, our five dollar and our one dollar tiers. We're like, hey, we're coming out with this shirt. If you want to just increase your pledge for like one month to get the shirt, here's how to do it. And, you know, if you want to decrease your pledge, that's fine. It's totally cool. You know, if you if you need to cancel afterwards, it's 100 percent fine. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and we we try to keep it very like low, low guilt, you know, like come and go as you please. Because, uh, honestly, like, for for most people, you know, for some people, this is not the case. For most people, for most, like, working adults, $8 a month is not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Even $15, $20 a month is really, in the scheme of things, the grand scheme of things, that that is not much, right? Mm-hmm. And so the hardest thing to get people to do is to press the join button and put in their credit card. Once they put in their credit card, right. like they said, it, it, it is staggering how many people just set it and forget it and and just stay on the Patreon. We have like 90% of the people on our Patreon have been on the Patreon for at least like three years. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have, we have extremely low turnover on the Patreon. Um, but that that hurdle is the hardest part. Right. Mm -hmm. So the more things we can do to get people to say, yeah, I want that T-shirt or, yeah, I want that pin. Or once a year, we'll do a private concert only for Patreon backers, all requests. You know, you can stream it if you want, but it's private stream. You can come in person if you're at the five dollar level or above. You know, so you get like this ooh, this secret show. And we don't we don't advertise the show. You know, we, we, we technically book the show as like a. Uh, uh, and it's always an anagram of Lords of the Trident, you know? Really? Yeah. Uh, the funniest one I think was, uh, uh, this is an actual anagram of Lords of the Trident. Uh, Red Hot Tit Fondlers <laughs> is an actual anagram of Lords of the Trident. So we always, we do that. We, we find some random band's photo. We put it on a poster. Yeah. And then we put some like horrendous uh, genre that we don't think anyone would ever want to come. You know, it's like, uh, like, metalcore noise core death punk mm-hmm. you know or uh uh like you know screaming uh screeching accordion distortion um disco yeah something like that you know like and 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 that's how we advertise it and so people in the know they know but you right. know people who don't in the know like would never want to come to this show um so so we do things like that yeah um we, we advertise it constantly. We push people towards it constantly. Um, every single email we send out, we always have a link to Patreon. Uh, and, and yeah, and everything we do, we always say Patreon, 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 Patreon. And, you know, as of, as of right now, I think we're, we're at $3,500 a month. Yeah. That's um, what I saw last time I looked. Yeah. So, so, you know, we're, we're about at 35, uh, 3,500 and, and, uh, about 700 people on the Patreon right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so like, things have been things have been really really good um you know and, and with thirty five hundred dollars a month you can do all sorts of you know right. insane stuff like tour japan exactly well, um but you already put so much out there how do you manage all of it how do you manage the stuff that you're going to do for patreon versus what you do publicly it's just you know because like even as a band before starting a patreon we're already mm-hmm. like, let's release something, promote the release, set up mm-hmm. shows, all this stuff. And that's also one of the other factors that I think can be problematic is the fact, or at least for people wanting to do it, like, well, what else could we offer? And it's like, well, now I'm just going to turn off part of it that I was giving people, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think that the thing, the important thing for people who are thinking about Patreon and, and are thinking about this question to understand is you're not... You don't necessarily have to make things for Patreon. What you have to do is you have to think about how you release said things, mm-hmm. right? So your Patreon backers, they're your most important fans because they are literally putting their money where their mouth is. You know, it's very easy to hit like. It's very easy to hit share. It is not very easy to put your credit card number in, right? And I would even so, argue it's hard for people to hit like and share sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know you have to think you always have to think about those fans first Mm -hmm. so okay i'm going to be releasing this album uh this album is done it's going to be a public album it's going to be publicly released how can i release it in such a way that the patreon people are 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 happy 
how can I release it in such a way that makes the Patreon people feel valued, feel like their their pledge is is worth it, right? And and for us, that is like, um, yo, we're releasing this album in October or right now. Up mm-hmm. to you, completely up to you. You know, uh, you can wait till October if you want. You don't have to. It's five bucks. If you right. don't want to wait, five bucks. Um, you know, uh, we're playing this show. Uh, you know, we play a lot of shows, but this one is a special show. You don't have to come to it. It's a buck. But if you want to, it's a buck. Yeah. You know, and uh, so, you know, uh, I, I do make additional uh, content for the Patreon. Um, and honestly, a lot of that is just like fun stuff that I felt like making. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, if, if you look at the if you look at the vast majority of the things that we create, um, a lot of them are strictly uh, or, or eventually will be public facing. You know, our streams, our trading casts, our albums, our music. Um, there's not really anything that we lock uh, under, you know, put under lock and key forever. Uh, pretty much everything is available. They're just um, in a different release cycle is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They, they, they release way earlier. Uh, the Patreon people get to see them way in advance. Mm-hmm. And then all the other plebeians, you know, the, the non, the non patrons, <laughs> yes. they, they get to, they get to see it when it's out, whenever that may be. And that's probably going to be months from now, but you know, that's, that's essentially, that's essentially the, the general strategy is like, think about how you can make those people the happiest. And then also, you know, at the same time, think about what entices someone to join your Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oftentimes it is a physical good or it is access or it is, you know, I mean, the fact that for, for, for us, for example, uh, we we have five albums available for download right now. If you join at the five dollar level on top of that, not only do we have those five full albums available, we have twenty seven uh live albums that are fully mixed fully oh, really mm-hmm. okay 27 live albums from pretty much every sh- uh, like uh, i would say not every show but a large majority of the shows that we've played over the last you know four years we've recorded and mixed and put up on the patreon hmm. um and so you know so you're getting you're getting five full albums you're also getting 27 live albums you're also getting 10 singles you're also getting exclusive video stuff so it's like there, there's it's an easy pitch to make mm-hmm. you know so for a band that's thinking about that it's like okay how how can you entice people to join the patreon and how can you create a package where it is very difficult for them to say no yeah you know um you know in, in our case it's like get an album for a dollar we're, we're we're literally the you know the uh the cd club of the 90s like you right. know just just a dollar and you get these 20 albums like jesus christ you know and you're saying um, 20 albums like cd albums well, or we've, you know digital? I, we, we've we it's, it's all it's all digital we okay. go we go broke if we send physical copies that's what i was gonna say okay i wasn't yeah. sure <laughs> But, you know, for me and for a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people uh, interact with music nowadays, either uh, streaming or MP3 or digital. It's all yeah. digital. Um, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm apparently now an old fogey that likes to just put actual MP3s on my phone. Oh, you uh, do? Of, oh, I do. Oh, I very much do. Because yeah. I was just struggling with that the other day. I'm like a big proponent for us was downloads. And mm-hmm. then I realized, you know what, that kind of weaned off several years ago. You know, I still I still like it. And I think people still, you know, at least for me, I think people still enjoy having uh, even if they don't actively utilize it. I think people enjoy having access to files on their computer just mm-hmm. in case, you know, you never know who's going to be pulled from Spotify. You never know when Spotify is going to like go under. True. Uh, so, you know, having that physical backup is always nice. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of that. It's a lot of like, you know, here's here's the things that we're creating if you want early access to it if you want access to like everything we've ever made for five bucks you know and you can you can download it all and then leave that's fine but statistically almost no one does Hmm. okay and and honestly if somebody wants to pay us five dollars and take 20 albums i would rather they have that music and they enjoy that music because there's a greater propensity that they'll come to a live show right. and pay twenty dollars for a t-shirt and you know, i don't i don't care it doesn't cost me anything mm-hmm. to to put files on google drive 
and to have people download them. That doesn't cost me a, a, a penny at all. No. So I'm like, anything that I can do that's free, I will just like take it all, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. You know? Yeah, it's really just uh, the organization of it once, and then it's just there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep, yep, yep. Now speaking of the live shows. Now, the Mad With Power thing, you were doing it. Matter of fact, you added an extra day to the one this year, didn't you? Or was it always two dates this year? Uh, it's been two dates. It since has been Mad, two dates. It's been two days since Mad With Power uh, 4. Okay. Or no, 3, 3, 3. Uh, no, no, 4. I'm sorry. It's two dates since Mad With Power 4. That's right. That's and right. When, when you started this, how did this idea come about? Tell people exactly what Mad With Power is and how did you start this whole thing, this annual festival? Yeah, so, <laughs> I guess so I don't Mad know what to call it. Mad With Power is, uh, is North America's largest arcade, pinball, and heavy metal festival. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, as of last year, just North America's largest power metal festival in general. Uh, we, so we, um, we take a big venue, uh, we fill it full of free play arcade and pinball games. Um, all the, all the available wall and floor space, basically, uh, along the sides of the venue are all filled with arcade, with arcade games. And then we have, uh, bands from all over the world come in and play the festival. And it's a really great time. Two day fest. Uh, it's a very fan forward fest. Uh, as far as I know, we are the only festival out there that has a a actual built-in dinner break uh so people can go <laughs> i eat. didn't know that okay yep we are the we are the first festival to my knowledge to take on Ticketmaster and win um where we told them that they had to wrap up the entirety of all of their fees into the final ticket price so that when someone saw a hundred dollar ticket for two days on the, the website they would get to the checkout and it would be a hundred dollars hmm, nice. plus or minus you know a couple cents for you know for local taxes or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, we actually lose 25% of every ticket sale uh, because of that decision. But I thought it was the right thing to do. Okay. Um, so, you know, there, and, and the arcade games and that kind of stuff them, themselves and our pre parties and our post parties and, and the stuff in between the festival, all of it is built with the idea of, of uh, creating community in mind so getting people you know to know each other getting people in the same room uh making new friends uh and and just having fun having a good nerdy time that's what that's what it's all about yeah uh, basically uh it started because we uh were lied to uh by two of the biggest heavy metal festivals uh in north america in 2013 and 2014 um and uh one of the one of the festivals said that they would um uh, they, they had, without going into the entire story, they messed up really bad. Uh, we were, we were headlining a stage. They had a big, huge snafu. They promised they'd bring us back, uh, and, and play on the bigger stage next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they conveniently were like, ah, we decided we didn't want to do repeats, you know, even though they looked me in the eyes and said, I promise. Uh -huh. Um, uh, the other festival <clears throat> said we were booked and then quote unquote, lost the email where we confirm right. our dog ate even it. <laughs> even though i had a read receipt from that person opening the email and i'm like no nah, i think you saw it and i sent him that um uh and then for the next two years he continued to like pull the rug out from under us saying we were booked and then we weren't and then we were booked and then we weren't hmm. i finally gave up and then he said that we would we could play the festival if we paid him not the festival but him fifteen thousand dollars damn okay and i was like that's a mazda miata that's like a good used car <laughs> i'm not i'm not buying you a used car buddy yeah no so i you know i i was so fed up by all of the bullshit in the music industry and people saying one thing and doing another and straight out lying to our face which is very common unfortunately in the music industry um that i was like you know what i'm gonna build my own festival uh, I'm going to build it on, you know, everything. I'm going to do the exact opposite of, of all the bullshit that they're doing. This is going to be an anti bullshit festival. This okay. is going to be fan forward, band forward. And I'm going to build it very slowly to the point where it, it takes over those two festivals and it outsells them every single year. And I'm happy to say that as of last year, we did that. The other festivals still go on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, nice. uh, you know, they, uh, uh, 
you know, let's just say there's a, um, at least for one of the two festivals, there's a little bit of a kiss the ring <laughs> kind of going on, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to, um, put together a festival and, and I've, I've kept my word on everything that I've ever promised anybody. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the one thing, you know, I never tell anyone that I will do anything and then, and then take it away. Um, even if I accidentally book somebody while I'm drunk, right. um, I will honor that, uh, which I have. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, and, and we also, um, I don't take any money from the festival at all. Uh, you know, I might take a hundred bucks to go get a massage after all the work is done. Uh, but other than that, uh, I don't, I don't take anything. Uh, Lords of the Trident doesn't take anything from the festival. I don't take anything from the festival. Um, and we essentially run on a razor thin margin every year so that we can give the bands, uh, as much money as, as possible. And also so that we can keep our ticket prices as low as possible. Mm -hmm. There are other, there are other festivals um, you know, the, the next leading power metal festival in the United States, um, you know, a two day ticket is like three hundred and three hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. Our two day ticket. And that doesn't even come with arcade games and pinball, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, our two day ticket is ninety nine bucks. Oh, nice. You know, so I try to keep it. I, I've seen people who've wanted to go to the other festival, but they've been priced out. You know, and I never want that to be an, an issue for people coming to Mad with Power. I never want to, people to feel priced out of Mad with Power. Um, so it's always this, you know, it's always this uh, razor thin line of like, uh, can I can I keep my house this year? Right. You know, uh, and and so far the answer has been yes. So it's been it's been really good. I've yeah. seen the posters for it, and um, I've I. Basically, I'd like to know how many bands are involved because to me, it's just a, you know, a collection of non-readable metal logos of band <laughs> names. So I don't know how many bands are actually involved. Oh, come on. I think most power metal band logos are actually pretty, pretty legible. But um, yeah, now the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, 12 bands every year. So it's six okay. bands a day. Um, so yeah, we have, we have three bands, a dinner break, and then three bands. And how do you uh, find these bands too? Uh, most of the bands are um, either bands I'm fans of or bands I'm friends with. Okay. Uh, or or bands that you know that have submitted uh, to our booking uh, spreadsheet. We have a hmm. we have a spreadsheet on the on the website at madwithpowerfest.com where we we push all the bands to go and and sign up. Um, and that essentially that that form feeds a spreadsheet. And every year as we're booking for the next year, uh, my partner and I will go through the entire spreadsheet front to back and uh revisit all you know 300 or so bands that have signed up to yeah. see what they're doing to see what they're up to see if they've released anything recently and see if they would you know if they would kind of fit the vibe uh of this year's festival but you know a lot of it is um you know i'm i'm in a band i play with a lot of you know i, I go do tours and i play with a lot of bands and i see a lot of bands and if a band really like knocks my sock off socks off or maybe just sock off singular. I don't know. Maybe I forgot us. Maybe I was not my one. My, my you only had one shoe on that day. Off. Yeah. So um, if a band really knocks my socks off, I will, you know, put them in the running kind of mentally, put them down on a list and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. And now one last thing you have an opera thing coming up <laughs> or a symphony thing or a, I'm yeah. not really sure. Well, I've seen you posting have, about it, and I'm still not really sure what it is you're going to do this week. Yeah, so I am going to, on, on Thursday, I'm flying to New York City um, to sing with the Sonic Symphony. Uh, there is a uh, double sold-out show in, I think, Times Square? I'm not 100% sure Okay. Um, exactly where it's at. Um, but it, it is in New York City proper, uh, and I think it's downtown. Um uh, I don't know much about New York City, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so I am I was hired uh, recently uh, as the singer for the Sonic Symphony. And um, when I was given the opportunity to do this, I actually didn't know what the Sonic Symphony was. Mm -hmm. um, I got a I got a I got a message from my very good friend, Adrian Cohen, who is the um, the singer for Seven Spires. And. Uh, she messaged me at 630 in the morning and, and, and I have to, so like, I have to express Adrian never, never uses Facebook messenger. Huh. 
You know, she she's barely online. Uh, If if she messages me, that is like I have to pay very close attention. Something is up. Something huge is happening if she messages me. Right. All right. So 630 in the morning, she sends me a message. Hey, Ty, the Sonic Symphony is looking for a singer. I think you'd be a great fit. You know, I'm I'm currently one of their singers. I'm going to be on tour in June with Avantasia. Um, We need a pinch hitter. You know, we need, and, and they're also kind of looking for somebody to like hire full time. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. Um, and I, so I'm sitting here groggy, six thirty in the morning, thinking like, what is the Sonic Symphony? It's maybe it's like a trans. It's it. It sounds like like a Trans Siberian Orchestra kind of a thing. Okay. You know. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, let me let me. Do you know when the dates are? She's like, oh, they're on the website. Uh, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go check. Hold on. So I groggily go downstairs, turn on my computer. And I, I search for the Sonic Symphony. I find out very quickly as my jaw drops. It is the Sonic the Hedgehog Symphony. Oh, okay. See that I did not get. All right. Yeah, and neither did I. And I until I saw the website, and I was like, Oh my god! <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I am so like I am I I am a I'm a Sega kid, and yeah. I. Uh, uh, I, I was like, I am, I am so about this. I am a hundred. So I ran, I ran to the messenger and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. So, um, uh, I, I got on a call with the, the, the band dad of the Sonic symphony. So to, to, to explain what this is, right. It's a, it's a full symphonic show, uh, full symphony orchestra, uh, and a full rock band. So it's like the whole like Metallica S and M kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a two and a half hour show. The first hour is first 45 minutes or so is a, um, is symphonic renditions of Sonic the Hedgehog music through the ages. And so it's a full symphony and it's very beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous melodies, gorgeous, uh, uh, renditions. And then for the second act, the rock band comes out. And so we play all of the, the newer Sonic the Hedgehog music from like the Dreamcast onward mm-hmm. um, with a full symphony orchestra behind us. Uh, and we play uh, to, you know, three to 4,000 people a night. Right. Um, and so it, which is, which is wild in like symphony halls, uh, you know, so we, um, so that, that, so I, I, I got on the phone with the, with the band dad of the Sonic symphony. And, you know, he said, uh, I'd like to, you know, hear you sing. I'd like to, you know, make an audition tape. I have to warn you, uh, a lot of this music, uh, a lot of the singers that we've had in the past are, are singers with very high ranges. <laughs> and normally, normally when somebody says to me, you know, oh, it's it's really high, mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Right, I, it's fine, you know. But um, in this case, he wasn't joking. Oh, the, okay. The, the highest note I have to sing for this set is an F sharp five, which is low soprano. Um, the, the, the guy that they had to do all of the music for the, the newest game, which is most of what we're, we're doing, uh, was like a metal core screamo kid who sounds like he's 12 years old, but he is my oh, age. Okay. You know, he's nearly 40, but he sounds like he's 12 years old. And so he sings like, he, he sounds, he sings like Michael Jackson. Like he sings hmm. like way, 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 way up there. Um, so I, I made a, I made an audition tape sent it in i didn't think i was gonna get the part because i'm like this is this this doesn't sound like the original song but okay we'll give it a shot mm-hmm. uh and to my surprise they're like they're like cool um what are you doing on the 26th this was back in march you know right. um, I, like second week of march what are you doing on the 26th i'm like the 26th of and they're like this month wait you mean two two weeks <laughs> two weeks and they're like, yeah, we got a show in Montreal and we don't have a singer for it. Would you be willing to fly out to Montreal? And I was like, ah, uh, right. okay. So I, I, I learned an hour and a half of Sonic the Hedgehog rock music in, in two weeks. Um, it flew out with zero, uh, zero rehearsal. Uh, they strapped me in. They gave me a, you know, they gave me a, a in-ear monitor pack and, Away I was going in front of three thousand people, and and I, I guess they liked me because they wow. they, they hired me. They hired, yeah. They, after the show, I played again with them in, in Milwaukee, and they officially they officially hired me. So. Okay. 
Yeah, that see that was my confusion. I saw like one day you're just posting the stuff you do, and then all of a sudden there you are taking a selfie in front of a symphony. And I'm like, what? Is and I was confused as to what was happening. So that's interesting. That's a fascinating story. Also with the high singing thing too, I will agree. You were one of the few singers I know who can successfully pull off Rob Halford. So <laughs> you get that going for you. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. that's awesome. That's a fantastic story and such a strange story yeah it's you know it, it is crazy that you know and that that's another thing where um a lot of people have kind of asked for advice and like well how do you you know how do you break through the noise how do you get more popular how do you do that kind of stuff and yeah. you know a, a lot of it is um a lot of it ultimately is right place right time but and 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 to some extent luck quote unquote mm -hmm. but Every single time that I've been in the right place and right time and had that luck, it's because of a bunch of stuff that I've done previously that has sort of built up that luck to the point where it's like I could, you know. So to give you a concrete example of that, um, I did for fun and for the Patreon, mm -hmm. I did a cover of Seven Spires song Succumb. Mm -hmm. And I did it in the same key in the same range that Adrian sings it. And she sings it. That's also like a, a high F, very high soprano, like very high belty kind of stuff. So I did a, a whole music video and, you know, recorded it and everything. And actually, uh, Jack, the guitarist from Seven Spires, mixed it for me, which was really fun. Oh, cool. They did it in their, you know, in their mixing style. So um, so I did that. And then when they played uh, Mad with Power, I, I sang that live with them. And they and Adrian was able to see that, like, oh, shit, he can actually hit that for mm. real live, you know, not on the studio. Um, and it was literally because of that, because I was making something for Patreon, because I was making something that I, I wanted to do because I liked that song a lot. And because I was, like, creating connections with other bands and not big bands, but small bands, bands mm -hmm. that were, you know, on our, our radar, our range. Right. Um, because of that specific thing that I did, when the Sonic Symphony needed a male singer who could sing really high, mm -hmm. the first person Adrian thought of was me. Yeah. Right? So it's not that I was sitting around on my hands waiting for somebody to be like, Ty's a good singer. Ty can sing really high. Let's ask him. It was literally, <laughs> I was like, I had I had put the pieces in place. Yeah. And then all she had to do was be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that thing right there. There it is. You know, so so that's what that's what a lot of it is. That's what 90 percent of like getting ahead in the music industry is. is. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the biggest the, the biggest um, uh, uh, the biggest jump we made in popularity was actually at the end of the pandemic or, you know, depending on how you look at it, um, when uh, Unleash the Archers had to cancel the first half of their uh, their tour. Um, they were going to go on tour with the band Seven Kingdoms and Aether Realm. Seven Kingdoms had just played Mad with Power and they were staying at my house and they were going to start the tour the next day. Mm -hmm. um, so Unleash Your just flew into Chicago and got denied at the border because they didn't quarantine long enough. They had to go back to oh. Canada and quarantine a whole nother week. So the entire first week of the tour was canceled. The problem was Seven Kingdoms was at my house <laughs> and, and Aether Realm was in Milwaukee at a show that I had set up for them. Uh -huh. And so they now all of a sudden lost all the first week's worth of shows. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, they were they would be burning money at hotels. They'd be burning money on food. They'd be burning money on gas. And I said to him, I'm like, yo, just just come back to my house. You can stay here for a week for free. I'll cook for you. I'll, you know, don't don't spend any money. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. We have, you know, I, I own 34 blow up beds mm -hmm. uh, because of the festival. So, like, we have plenty of beds. Don't worry about it. And and they were like, well, what what can we do to you know like we we really want to play a show in the meantime we we got to make some money you know otherwise we're going to be in the red, and so we brainstormed and we said, well you know the entire pandemic Lords of the Trident had been doing live stream shows, uh, fully mixed you know multiple cameras, and so I was like, uh, you know we've never done it with another band but I don't see why we couldn't. Like why right. don't we do a, a, th a three band live live stream show and then I'll give you like we'll take tips and I'll give you guys all the money that comes in. Like a hundred percent of the money. Cause it's like, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, it doesn't cost me any money to right. like set up my cameras and hit go that are already know? set up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like it doesn't cost me anything to do that. So I'm like, you know, you guys just take the money. It's fine. Like I don't need it. You guys do. So we, we did this show and we, and we advertised it and, um, and unleash the archers and their record label 
uh, and their PR firm went full blitz hmm. on like save the tour, save the opening bands, watch this stream, donate. Yeah. We had like I think we had like seven or eight hundred people watching wow. it, and we, and we had even more people that watched the replay. And um, I, if I remember correctly, I I want to say we made something like six grand on just tips, mm -hmm. and so each band got three three grand out of that, which is more they would more than what they would have made like from the guarantees for the shows. Yeah. Um, so they, so they, we essentially saved the tour and, and overnight Lords of the Trident went from like, oh, I think I've heard of them to like, Oh, they're that band that saved the tour, you know? And, and now so, and, that other band lives in your house with you. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's what I mean. Like, you know, it, it wasn't that we had like, we were waiting to do a live stream. Right. Right. We had, we had taken all the steps throughout the entire year or two years during the pandemic to start setting up the live stream, to tweak our settings, to know what we needed to do. And, and we had, we had done all these live streams over and over and over mm -hmm. again so that when the opportunity presented itself, when that luck happened, right, we were like set and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and so like that, that's essentially what the big thing I've learned is that like, you know, when people say you make your own luck, it is really like, you have been you have to like start the ball rolling and then eventually somebody will come along and like kick the ball for you yeah but you can't just sit and wait for the ball to start rolling by itself right you know? <laughs> yeah well these have all basically been fascinating stories and i've just been sitting here listening to you i i sometimes keep forgetting that i'm even part of this interview but it's been great <laughs> talking to you about this stuff and uh as we wrap up here where could people go to find out more about your band and listen to what what you guys have. Sure. The number one easiest thing to do is lordsofthetrident.com. Uh, that is your hub for pretty much any links uh, going to anywhere, uh, Lords of the Trident. Um, we, I would also recommend checking out our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash lords of the trident. We put up a lot of videos and we have a mm -hmm. lot, 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 lot of videos. Five, in fact, five music videos coming out four of which are already completely done Oh, okay. Um, coming out over the next five months. Uh, we've got music video dropping every month. The music video that's going to be dropping in 10 days is the coolest thing I've ever shot in my entire life. And also the most dangerous thing I've ever shot in my entire life. All right. And, and uh, no, hu to our knowledge, no human being has ever done this before and lived. So, okay. You got to check this one out. It's coming out. Uh, hit the subscribe button on Lords of the Trident yeah, on the YouTube so you, that you see it when it comes out. It is going to be, I, I I have a feeling this thing's going to going to do really well. <laughs> At least I hope so. And if it doesn't do well, that's okay because it's the coolest thing I've ever shot, and I don't care. We shall um, see. <laughs> but but yeah, um, and of course, if, if people are interested in supporting the band and they want to get some perks or they want to hear the new album, patreoncom slash Lords of the Trident. Uh, if you join for five bucks, you get all, uh, you, you, like I said, you get five albums for five bucks, plus 27 live albums, plus 10 singles, plus all sorts of extra, extra crazy stuff. Um, and it, and all the money goes directly to us. A hundred percent of the money goes directly to the band. So, um, so yeah, patreon.com slash Lords of the Trident. Uh, and if you just type Lords of the Trident into Google, we're the first 50 pages and then it starts getting really weird. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been great. Absolutely. Anytime.